Capital Hoops here on the Quarantine Files. Today I've got a big group of guys. I got a bunch of Prince George's County head coaches. And the theme for, for this episode are current Prince George's County coaches who have won a regional championship and who have played at the University of Maryland. Some of these guys have done that with, have done their, with their current team. Some have done it with other teams within the county. But I've got 10 coaches here all who have had success. And we're gonna start by kind of introducing each guy. Each guy will give us a quick resume of what they've, who they've coached and how many times they've been to the University of Maryland. And then we'll kind of break off with some specific questions. So I will start with Coach Rob Garner. Rob Garner, head boys basketball coach at Gwen Park High School. Uh, um, I've coached at Friendly High School. Uh, and I've coached at Wise High School. Um, I've won the regional championship four times, two times while I was coaching in 2009 and 2011, and while at Wise 2014 and 2017. Uh, so that would mean that I've been to Maryland four times, uh, in which I've only won one, which was in 2014. Uh, my highest level of playing was Division One basketball. Uh, finished at, uh, started at University of Texas and finished at University of Delaware. You, play, you played in Prince George's County as well, right? High school? Yep, played at, played at uh, the prestigious Potomac High School um, in Oxon Hill. All right. Next, we will go to Coach Lou Howard. Uh, good evening. Thanks for having me. Uh, Lou Howard, currently the head coach at Oxon Hill High School. Uh, won the regional championship at Largo High School in 2005, 2007, 2008, and 2012. And uh, we won the state championship in 2008. Uh, I played my college basketball at Stony Brook University in New York. All right. Let's stick on the Lou, and we'll go to Coach Lou Wilson. Hello, Mark. How you doing? It's Coach Lou Wilson from Dr. Henry A. Wise Junior High School, and I'm so uh, glad to be here amongst all of my uh, colleagues. Um, I did win a regional championship at, at three different schools, uh, one being Frederick Douglass High School, which was my alma mater, uh, which I played and uh, was very successful at that school. The Eagles fly high down to Douglas. Um, also won a regional championship at Largo High School, um, 2000, no, no, sorry, not 2000, but uh, 1993 uh, regional championship over there. Um, and now I'm at Dr. Henry Wise High School where uh, we just won a regional championship um, down there. Uh, my highest uh, playing, role was at Howard University, the Howard University, uh, back in the day when there was only uh, 32 teams selected to the NCAA. I was a member of the Hall of Fame Dunk Patrol for Howard University and helped lead them to uh, the NCAA out in uh, California. And we played at uh, UCLA at the Poly Pavilion. So that was my highest uh, you know, playing ability was playing Division I basketball at Howard University. All right, thank you. How about Coach Reynard Johnson from Potomac? Good, e good evening. Coach Johnson at uh, Potomac High School. Uh, first regional championship I've been a part of was with Coach Garner as one of his assistants at Friendly High School. Appreciate him. I'm forever indebted to him for letting me be a part of that. That was a very special season. Um, we've been blessed to have three regional championships at Potomac High School, each time advanced to the state finals, winning it one time uh, in 2014 with Deion Wiley and uh, Randall Brody and those guys. Um, my highest level of basketball, um, I played at VMI for two years, um, Virginia Military Institute, and then I, I graduated uh, from the University of Delaware where I played there as well. I played four years of uh, varsity uh, Division I basketball. I also played my high school career at my alma mater, Potomac High School. 
which Rob Garner, um, I made him uh, want to come to Potomac after him and me uh, in my illustrious career at the Potomac High School. <laughs> All right, thank you. Coach, Coach Brendan O'Connell. What's up, Mark? Thanks for having Mark, me. Thanks for having me. I, uh, my, my playing career ended after high school. Uh, I went to the University of Maryland and did not play there. Uh, but I've been the head coach at Eleanor Roosevelt for the past 15 years. And uh, we've won eight regional championships. And, and we've won uh, state championship in 2013, 2016, 2019. All right. Coach Chuck Henry. Hey, what's up, Mark? Thanks for having me on, man. Uh, Chuck Henry, head coach at Fairmont Hunt High School, uh, graduate of Forestville High School, uh, graduated from Barton College, uh, played overseas for about five years um, in Germany. Uh, I was a Division II coach at my alma mater, Barton College. Uh, I was a Division III coach at Catholic University, Division I coach at Longwood University. Uh, uh, in my five years at Fairmont Heights, we've won three regional championships, and we were blessed to win the state championship in 2017, state runners up in 2018. So, um, pretty, pretty good first five years. All right, Coach Lawrence Pugh. Good evening, Mark. Thanks for having me. Um, I want to say um, to all the coaches as well. I'm, I'm the head coach at Central High School. I've been there for about 10 years. We won two regional championships in 2014 and 2017. Um, also, the high, like Brendan, the highest level I played was high school basketball at Archbishop Curl. I went to college and I played, I was a football player in college. So I played football at Catherine University. So that's, that's my resume. All right, Coach Tyrone Massenberg. Sir, thanks for having me, Mark. Um, Tyrone Massenberg, currently head coach at Frederick Douglass in Upper Marlboro. Uh, previously coached as an assistant at Central High School. Uh, was head coach at Suitland High School. Um, four times we went to the regionals at Central as an assistant. Uh, two states. Uh, no, actually three. And three state, three regional championships at Douglas. Uh, my first year at Douglas, we went to the regionals, went to the states. And last year, and then this year. Um, went to Central High School also. And from there, I went to uh, Fayette, Virginia State. All right. Coach Demario Newman. Good evening, Mark. How you doing? How's everybody doing? Um, let's see here. Uh, I, w I was a football player actually growing up. Um, just to start off, I played, I played college football for one year at Alabama A&M University. Uh, originally from Buffalo, New York. Moved to Maryland in 2000. Took over the girls program in 2006. Won three regional championships for the girls. Moved on to the boys' side. Uh, one in 16, and we won this year. Two, 2016, two, and this year, 2020, with the boys. So, you were you where were you the girls' coach at? Also at Sarasville? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I've been at Sarasville since since I moved to Prince George's County. So, okay. Um, been yeah, yeah. So everything, my my resume is all Sarasville. All right, and we got Coach O, Antonio Williams from Bladensburg. Uh, Coach Antonio Williams, uh, most like uh, played my high school basketball at the stable, uh, D. Bladensburg High School, uh, class of 1997. Uh, my basketball career ended right there. Um, coached in two regionals, uh, state runner-up in 2018. Actually coached in three regionals, state runner-up in 2018, and this past season, uh, Regional Championship. All right. Well, thank you, guys. I really appreciate all of you joining me. Um, it's time to talk some PG County hoops. As everyone knows, there's a big documentary coming out uh, May 15th on Showtime that features 
Prince George's County basketball. And I'm just, I'm just curious to get y'all's thoughts on, uh, on this documentary. It's obviously a nationwide thing where a lot of eyes will be on the county where you guys call home and where you guys work on, you know, where you perfect your craft. And I'm just curious how you guys feel about your county being, you know, recognized on the national stage. Don't all jump at once. I, I guess I guess I'll jump in there first, man. Um, I, I'll say this: uh, I think it's a great thing for our county um, because there have been so many great players that have come out of this county, um, not just in the public school realm, but the private school realm as well. Um, I mean, I'm just looking at a bunch of guys right now who, you know, I looked up to um, both in coaching as well as playing. <clears throat> so, you know, um, I, I think it's incredible for our county. And to be totally honest, I love to just see, you know, I, I can't wait to see some of the names because I know there's some guys that won't be highlighted in there that have been incredible basketball players that have come out of our county. You know, just thinking about some of those guys that kind of floated under the radar to like Saratsville, they have Terrell Millington and, and uh, uh, man, you, you can go through so many different names. Joe Lofton at Forestville and, and uh, Sean Brooks at Central. There's so many guys that may possibly not even be mentioned. So uh, I, I can't wait to hear the names. Yeah, I'll, I'll go next. Um, Actually, being from uh, North Carolina, moved up here in 91. Uh, when I moved up here, I moved over on the Potomac side over at uh, Southview. Um, I, I knew about Prince George's County. Uh, learning the history at my school was very important for me. So that's what started me digging more history into the school, talking about guys like uh, Brian Davis and Thurl Bailey and Tootsie Roll and all those guys that played at Blazeboro High School with Skip Speaks and guys like that which really brought me some, some history and I told our guys about it. So it's very important to me. So I think it's a great thing for the county um, for us to hear this, what we're going to hear on at this doc, especially be on Showtime. So it's going to be for the nation as well. So that's a great thing. Well, being at Oxen Hill, just coming into there, uh, moving from Largo to Oxen Hill, I found out some more things. I knew about Mike Sweetney. Uh, that's probably the closest thing that I knew, but then, I had someone approach me a couple of weeks ago about Booty Neal, and uh, he's a, a legend uh, at Oxon Hill and Oxon Hill basketball. Obviously, this was before I moved to Prince George's County, so uh, maybe some of the guys in the group can kind of enlighten me a little bit about Booty Neal and his talents that he had at Oxon Hill. Uh, yeah, Coach, Booty we had a couple down here. Uh, Booty Neal, Mike Tate. Um, I don't know if you know about him. He went to Georgetown. Mm -hmm. um, and I, heard, I heard of him as well. Like one of the best scores we probably ever had in the county. Um, could do everything. Okay. Um, as far as the uh, documentary, um, I hope that they do highlight uh, some of the pioneers from the county. I know, um, you know, I don't know how much research the fact that Prince George's County is being mentioned on Showtime for that draws the draws uh, attention to all of us. So, so you know, we we kind of uh, have inherited some kind of a uh, you know we're gonna have to uphold that from this point on for sure. Every place we go, and so that's the Prince George's County team. They were on Showtime, so that's a good that's a good thing to have that that target on us. Um, I think we can hold that hold our own on that. But um, I do know the guys that, uh, and Coach Lou also, uh, know the guys who put this put the documentary together, and I think that they're going to do it some justice. Well, I think we're blessed because right amongst this group of just us, we have Rob Garner in here, and he went to the University of Texas. And he, in 91, he was one of the best players in the country. So we're just talking about a group of coaches. Not to, not to put you out there, Rob. And Coach Wilson, I know the guys you coach because you, you had me on executive three and that sort of thing. But just in this group alone, I mean, he should be highlighted. I don't know if a lot of you guys have heard of B.B. McGaney. I mean, it's just going to be guys and guys that will be left off, that's, but that's going to elevate the guys that they do put on display.
But I mean, they could do a 10 part series in Prince George's County, just like they're doing the last dance. I promise you, it's that much talent. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm just blessed to, to be in this county and a good friend of mine, we thought about this probably 20 years ago about how much we felt like Prince George's County was the hotbed of high school basketball. And we felt like we had the best talent in the world. Um, and we thought about it and we said, it must be something in the water. And you know what, lo and behold, now we have a documentary coming out on Prince George's County and there's something in the water. And I tell you, I mean, I've coached a lot of great players, great players. I mean, Rob Gardner played AAU for me, so did Renard. I mean, but there's so many great players, like he said, it's going to be missed. Right here from Potomac High School, Byron Tucker. I mean, the Tucker boys were very good. Milstead from Potomac. There were some great players down at Potomac High School that's going to get missed in this documentary, I'm sure. Um, I hope they don't miss out on the friendly star, Dickie Simpkins, who I had an opportunity to coach in AAU, but I also had a chance to coach against him. I coached at Largo High School, and I had a great player by the name of Don Reed, who went on to go to Georgetown University and was the last pick in the draft. And to this day, I mean, he stays in contact with me. He lives in Michigan, has a wonderful family out there. He's got a big old farm out there. Uh, he's real tight with Joe Dumars. Uh, so it, there's going to be so many players. I mean, Coach Massenberg talked about Michael Tate. There's another a uh, dual player that came out of Oxen Hill too called Derek Finner. Uh, I coached against him uh, when I was at Douglas High School and he would put the fear of God in you when you went into that gym, when you went to Oxen Hill or if he came to your gym. Uh, just a quick story about Derek Finner. Uh, he was so good at basketball that, you know, you marvel over his talent because he was built like a football player. And then sometimes I would say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go watch this kid play football. I went to a football game one night up at High Point High School, and I watched Derek Fenner drag maybe four players from the 40-yard line to the end zone in the rain. I mean, he was such a talented uh, individual. He's probably going to get left out on the documentary. Uh, I've coached some great players. Uh, Michael Beasley uh, played for me at uh, – Riverdale Baptist, uh, Nolan Smith played for me at Riverdale Baptist. And I tell you, there's no other player in the world that had a motor like Thomas Robinson. Uh, he played for me at Riverdale Baptist. These guys played in the NBA and a three-year player for me from Riverdale Baptist, Chananu Anawaku, who got drafted by the Houston Rockets. I could go on and on and on. Gerard Mustaf out of the math. The math is the king of yeah. probably having yeah. some of the greatest uh, talent in Prince George's County. And those kids, most of them came right from Prince George's County. So I could go on and on coaches. So I know my time is probably up, but I want to get a couple words in. I think what's unique, man, is that, uh, I mean, I'm not sure how they're going to go with the documentary, but it's hard to talk about Prince George's County basketball from the earlier standpoints where most of those guys were from public schools. I mean, you know, the foundation of Prince George's County basketball was in the public schools. So many awesome players. Like, for an example, I remember my father telling me a story about a guy named Harold Fox out of Northwestern. But, you know, people don't really know who Harold Fox is or talk about Harold Fox. But, man, my dad told me stories about him dribbling full court behind his back in the basketball game and, you know, things of that nature. I mean, you just hear... You know, I heard, I heard Coach O talking about uh, Brian Davis when I was in the ninth grade, man. I mean, he was one of the first persons that I, I got dunked on at Blade by Brian Davis. I mean, you know, it was just so many really good basketball players in that earlier standpoint. I'm just hoping that they would, you know, talk about a little more public school. I, and, you know, I'm not trying to make a debate between public and private, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I, I would like to see them talk a lot more about some of those earlier public school guys, like you mentioned, Dickie Simpkins, he was a pro. Don Reed out of Largo was a pro. I mean, these are pro basketball players coming through Prince George's County public school, you know? And um, I think one of the awesome things is, uh, you know, Coach, Coach Wilson talked about coaching me and Coach, Coach, Coach Berg, 
you know, was a coach on an, in another program, you know, who kind of took me underneath his wing and planted some seeds. And he really wasn't even, you know, he wasn't a coach of a time. But, you know, he was always active in Prince George's County and had opportunities to, you know, to be amongst the elite players in the county. And very fortunate, man, you know, to have those type of people like a Wilson and Massenburg, some of those older guys, uh, and still giving back. Look at them, they're still giving back. I got I a question for you. Anyone else want to go? No, you can go in. How many, how many of you coaches here either coached against or saw Len Bias play at Northwestern? Anyone? I never uh, coached against him, um, but I did have a chance to see him play in the uh, famous, uh, the longest running summer basketball league in the state of Maryland. The Falconers, the Falcon, the basketball. Falconers League. I knew it. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen them all. I've seen the greatest players that come out of Prince George's County, and I forgot all about. We can't forget about the Wizard Walt Williams. I mean, oh, he, was, he was a showstopper. I mean, in the Falconer League. I mean, Lem Bias, Jay Bias, they all have come through the the Falconer Summer Basketball League. Yes, Jay uh, Lem Bias was was uh he was a specimen he was going to be special he was young at the time um i knew this, the better days were going to be ahead of him but yes uh, i did get a chance to see lem bias perform coach johnson i saw you raise your hand as well did you did you play against him no 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 he came out 82 but i grew up nah i came out 86 but even when i was in silver hill boys club i followed potomac i mean i could have gone to private schools or that sort of thing I always knew I wanted to go to Potomac High School. So I followed them since I was 11, 12 years old as a product of Silver Hill Boys Club. And I remember Lynn Bias came and uh, actually we had Coach Sanford. Potomac actually won the state championship that year in 1981. But Bias did the dunk when he releases his hands, that, that dunk he does against North Carolina that you see all the time. The backwards one and he lets it go. He did it first at Potomac. And I was there as a young kid. I was like 11 or 12 years old. That's cool. I want you guys. Yeah, um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, Lynn, uh, he and I are pretty good friends. We played, we graduated the same year, actually. We played on the same AAU team. Um, Johnny Dawkins was on the team, Donnell Swinton. Uh, that summer, we went to Canada and we just, uh, you know, AAU was just really about wasn't that serious back then. So, uh, you know, we just, we, we, we played youth games. Uh, this same year at Northwestern, yeah, it was. I was at, at Central playing, and he, uh, he got in trouble at Northwestern. Missed maybe the first five or six games that season. So we were going back and forth, and I thought that, you know, when we played them, which was the outer league, that he wasn't going to play. Yeah. So I thought we were good. And then I get to the game and he's like, I'm playing tonight. So I'm like, how are you playing? You said you wasn't. He talked to coach and letting him play. Come back a game earlier. And he had like 32 on him. But you know, his 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 passion hurt me. Um I think I come home uh and I think the week that I came home was uh, was that week? So, um, you know, I, I I saw I saw him play all the way up through. From we played him in Walker Mill. We played I played at Walker Mill. He played at Winwood. Uh, we played him in the middle school championship, and I just watched him get better and better. I want to ask you guys, what do you think the most important? Um, the most important factors in building like a cult, the culture that's necessary to be a winning team, to be a state championship caliber team. I know everyone probably has different viewpoints as far as what are the, the most critical aspects to that. But I'm just curious if you're putting together a team and that's the goal, what are you trying to do to foster that, you know, that environment and create that culture? 
I guess I'll, I'll go first. Uh, uh, I'm big on perception, and you know, we talk about how people perceive you, and our kids know that um, we want to change the perception. You know, I'm at Bladesburg. You know, it is what it is, and our kids understand that we have to be a step or two in front of in front of our opponent, not just on the court, but in the classroom as well, and much like Prince George's County kids as well. So. When we talk about building a culture, I think the culture starts with knowing your history. You know, once you know your history, then you can start building upon that. And I call it chasing our history, you know, and, and looking up to our tradition. And when we started bringing those guys back and going to that state championship game, a lot of people don't know the night before we went to go play in the state championship game, we had about 50 to 60 alumni going all the way back to 1970s that played at Blazeboro High School. And they was able to share their stories. And when they went to state championship games and lost in the championship game, and being able to be successful in, in the classroom and on the floor and meeting a guy like Skip Speaks that I always heard about but never had a chance to meet him. I think the culture starts with knowing your history. So that's one thing that I had to do. And then once you know your history, then you can kind of like know which direction you're trying to go as far as the program. Brent, Coach O'Connell, you, you've you've uh, put together a a program that seems to seems to get to University of Maryland quite often. What how do you how do you build that culture? What are the most important? What's the foundation look like? I mean, it starts with just right now. I think it just starts with good kids. You know, like I mean, I just look for kids that care about basketball and getting better, but also kids that you know, like O said, they want to be students and they want to play in college. You know, I, I, we, we talk a ton about history now. You know, back in the day, I, I, you know, Roosevelt didn't have a ton of history in the 80s and 90s. But, you know, just, just trying to, like, just trying to get this, you know, a, a competitive atmosphere every day. You know, just kids that, that want to work and want to compete. I feel like that's, you know, that, that's how we, you know, we started it back in the day just with a bunch of kids who were hungry and compete. You know, there wasn't a ton of history we could talk about. But, you know, if, if you find those kids that that just, you know, they, they just want to work, they want to get better, they, they're, they're team guys, you know, which is really hard today to find guys that, you know, they're, they're willing to buy into something that's bigger than themselves. I mean, um, so I, I don't know. I can't, I can't really point to one or two things. It's a bunch of things. Anyone else? I agree, too. I agree with that too, Brennan, because we talk about history a lot, and you know, we, it's, it's about some foundation, but to our today's kids, they don't understand that history. So I know for my program, I, 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 I preach on three principles, dedication, commitment, and, um, and trust. Because I, I need for them to understand that it's one in the classroom first. Do your job inside the classroom and trust the process. You have to want to be at your school. You know, we have a saying at Central that we want kids who want to be at Central. Central is not sexy anymore. And the, the history of Central is, is great. You know, when I first came to Central, I remember Coach Lou wasn't telling me it, 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 it's going to come back around. It's in cycles. He said it's, it's going to be in cycles. Trust the process. And at that time, I didn't want to hear it. I didn't believe him, but it did. Because we had kids who want to trust our, our, our norms. Be committed to the program, be dedicated to the program, and trust the program and trust yourselves. But also, I, I like what Brendan said about kids wanting to go to college, wanting to make a pathway through basketball, but they got to do all the things that's necessary for them to put themselves in the right position. I don't think you necessarily can always just start with the kids because no matter what, you got to have great families in your program. Um, you 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 have to you have to work on your parents as well. Um, it's really important to have great relationships with them. Um, you can't be buddy buddy with them. You still got to kind of keep them at arm's distance. And I'll be honest, like looking at the coaches in this panel, I'm I'm probably not qualified for the the culture uh, question, but I know something that we have tried to work at was making sure that we have great families within our program. Um, you know, we've we've let a kid a few kids go because maybe they're really talented, but you, you know, the parents don't have the same value system that we have, which means you gotta get it done in the classroom. Because if you're not gonna get it done in the classroom, then ultimately we're gonna be churning out kids who, who going out into society and they aren't prepared um for whatever is next to be college and career ready. Um so no matter what, you really have to, you know, have 
parents who are engaged and you know it it, it kind of comes down to this one principle for me like the dad can be soft all day long like that that's not a big thing but the moment you got a soft mama and she allows you know kind of you know misogynist and just allow the kid to do whatever he wants to do and 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 really just kind of babying him it makes it a really difficult situation that you can't really ever coach that, that kid so again you know you always got to have great relationships with the parents to make sure that somebody at home is being tough on that on that young man and making sure he's doing what he's supposed to be doing the next thing i want to ask you guys about is Obviously, you guys, there's so much talent in Prince George's County, but the private schools get so much of it. And I want to hear from you guys on what, if anything, you can do to try to keep the kids that live in your zone at your school. Obviously, the private schools can recruit them, but from what I've been told, you're allowed to talk to the kids that live in your zone and try to convince them that, you, that they should come to your school instead of a private school. I, I don't know if that's exactly correct, but I know keeping, keeping kids in your, at your school is a really, really important component of having a good program and having good kids. Who wants to talk on that? And did, I do. Did I have that? Can I get that first? Can I get that first? Did I say can that? I get that? <laughs> I'll take that. Did I say that correctly? Can you correct me if I said anything wrong there? No, no, you didn't say anything wrong, but, but he, he, and I'm going to be serious here. So we have a crazy boundary at Potomac, and then a lot of kids around the area, they can test out and go somewhere else, and that's fine. Um, I like to say the kids that come to Potomac, we're a different breed of kid. Um, those hallways are a little different. So if they choose to come to Potomac, by the time we get off the bus, I like I like my chances. Um, so I don't I don't want to chase kids. I always say, do you want a girl who thinks she's a six, but thinks she's a nine? You can never make that girl happy. You can never make her happy. So the kids that want to come and think they should be at Damantha or St. John's or wherever else, they can go. They I promise you they can go. And we've done all right with the scraps we've been given. I promise you I can match our resume up. Um, but I'm not chasing the key. I'm not chasing that six that thinks she's a 10. I'm not going to do that. Or that, or, or it could be a 10. Go be somewhere else. So I got kids at Benjamin Star, the Holy Family. I have some of the best talent in the whole DMV within a 10 mile proxy of us. Rather, it's in Southview Apartments, all the apartment complexes. We got the most talent. But just give me 12. Give me 12. Give me 24. And we'll be all right. But I'm not chasing them. I'm sorry. I just can't. I won't do it. I, no, for me, for me I don't, I don't, I don't fault the kids. It's, it's the parents putting their kids in certain positions for, in life. So that's not, that's not a fault of the kids saying they they choosing pub, public, me private, public over private. Because I went to private school. I went to Curl. You know, I, I could have went to Potomac where I grew up and, and had a different career path as far as my athletic talents. But what I also one thing you could you could add to added to your question mark is. It's not only we fight with the private schools, but I, I, there are certain schools fight with public schools fight with other public schools. So the issue is, the issue truly is, kids need to understand. No matter where you go, you you gonna be the same type of ball player. You might not like the school you you zone for, but if you go to that school, make that school better. That says a lot about you as a player. So it, there's no issue with the private school versus public school because parents are gonna put their kids in the best situations they can possibly put them in. I know I'm just I, I have a child, I'm an older son. He's 17. He's a 4.2 student. He goes to Oxon Hill. He's on a wrestling team. I, I, can I afford Gonzaga? Yeah, I can. I can afford Gonzaga. I can afford any private school. But it was his choice. And my choice is a parent to put my child in a public school. But but for, but to be, to be honest with you, Mark, the real question is that we fight amongst ourselves under the under the covers for kids for the same thing. Cause like like cause I, cause I agree with but right now I say cause there are a lot of kids in my zone the other these schools guess what I'll be a part of your private house as well cause Central still have talent in their neighborhood it's the same Central from the 80s and the 90s and early 2000s um so yeah that's that's my take I have no problem with the private school it's the parents putting their kids in their best positions so hey, I'm can't a, um, let me let me let me it's like Renard and Coach P said. Um, 
you know, Douglas High School just uh, probably had probably the most private school talent. Uh, we got kids playing everywhere in, in Upper Marlboro. Uh, and then we have two schools within 15 minutes of each other, public schools, who, um, you know, they got, they, they have everything that we don't as far as the, the eye test. So our kids, uh, when they choose to go to Douglas, turn down the, the big gym, turn down the, 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 the other big gym on the south, turn down the gym on the north, and come play in our gym, I don't have a problem. I, 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 you know, that's the situation I want. You know, I'm like Renard. If they want to be there, yeah. you know, they could be at a lot of different places. But they choose to uh, come on Croom Road, and you know, it's, a, it's it's I don't I don't worry about it. I can have a whole different starting five if everybody in private school went to the school they went to the school they were supposed to, and I wouldn't trade my kids. I can chime in just for 30 seconds. Um, I think the biggest thing, when I first got the coaching job at Blazeburg eight years ago, the main we only had 16 kids try out for varsity this year at a 4A school. So we're like probably like a 1A school for us population when it comes down to sports. Um, you notice when you go to middle school games, the middle school coaches that coach in our county, their biggest thing is I'm getting this kid into a private school. That's what they hang their hat on. You know, yeah. I, I think that's the biggest problem, getting to know your middle school coaches. So they're not, I don't, I mean, if I had a son and he had to choose between DeMatha and Blaisburg, he'd be going to DeMatha if that's what's best for him. You know, but I think the biggest thing is that the coaches, not just the coaches, parents too, but it's two sides too. When the coach is already putting that in the kid head, you got to go to private school, you got to go to private school. And when you get a kid in private school, that's that's the highlight, like get us getting a kid in Division One school from high school. You know, so I think that's the biggest thing, too. Coach Wilson, you've coached in both. You've had a lot of success at both. You've been able to recruit, and then you've been in a public school where maybe you can't recruit. What are your thoughts on this? Yes, I have, Mark. I've been on both sides of the coin. I've been in the private school at Riverdale Baptist when I was able to. Uh, like you said, I could recruit uh, any player from any boundaries, uh, from out of state. I mean, I have a pretty decent resume, Mark, and uh, I get phone calls right now. I get phone calls about students from all over the country and talking about they saw me on the internet or they saw me on some social media and uh, my cousin or my friend or my grandma lives in the Wise Zone and, you know, I want to come to Wise. I mean, so it's just, uh, I think it's all about relationships um, that you can, um, you know, build your programs around, whether it be private or public. Uh, public school, all the coaches are exactly right. I mean, there's so many good players in the middle school that you could feed into your program. And some of those kids, we don't, we don't get them in the, in the public schools. They go off to private schools. I mean, I was in a battle in the last couple of years over some middle school kids that were at James Madison. They didn't end up coming to, to Wise High School. They ended up going to a private school. But I'm to the point where I believe that some of those student athletes that are going to the private schools are going to see that maybe the grass is not greener on, on that side. And they will matriculate back to us, back to their home school. And then we'll see the transformation of the public schools rising to the top again like they once were back in the day back in the 80s back in the 90s when the public schools were were a power and had six eights and six nines and six sevens and those kids could really play and they went on to be in the nba or you know play major college basketball i believe that that's going to happen i believe that the pub the private school kids are going to start matriculating back to their local high schools and we're going to start seeing the public schools having more powerhouse teams. Some people think that that could happen as soon as next year with the potential financial fallout of COVID-19 and people not being able to afford private schools. Um, I've heard from various coaches that 
you know, what you're alluding to, Coach Wilson, could, could begin to happen next year. Does anyone have thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, would, I would say right away I think it's going to happen pretty soon because, one, people are going to lose their jobs and they're not going to be able to afford private school educations, whether that be full scholarship or, or, or not. Um, you know, these kids aren't going to be able to afford that because you still got to think about even if you got a full ride, you still have to make sure your kid gets to school every day, especially if you, like you say, you live in an upper Marlboro and you're trying to get to, you know, a, a school downtown or uptown D.C., um, it, it's not always going to be feasible. So now you're going to start to see some of those kids come back because if you just look at the screen, you got tons of really, really incredible coaches. I mean, we, we're talking about some some – some Hall of Fame coaches in this group right now. Um, and, and, you know, these guys are going to start to see their kids come back home. Um, it, it, it's it's going to happen a lot sooner than, than, than everyone thinks. Anyone else have any thoughts about, about this? And I don't, I don't want to dominate and talk too much, but um, in 2014, we had a kid named Quadre Smith um, who came from Paul the Six. He could essentially walk the Potomac and grew up with all the kids, um, Randall Bro. Those were his boys growing up. His mother told me that it cost to her $711 for transportation all the way up to Fairfax, Virginia, and lunch a month, $711. And he was getting home because they only had a, I don't know about the facilities, but sometimes they didn't start practice until 9 p.m. Now, I mean, you throw in just those kind of things, something's going to have to give, given these times. $711 just to eat and drive? That's, that's a lot. He was a big kid, though, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I, I thought about that, too. Right, right. 500 all right that so might let's say food, 600 man. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> 550 all right. That's my last offer. <laughs> um, let's talk about... What is a PG County legend to you guys? There's been a lot of talk about this. A lot of talk. We've got some PG County legends of their own on Instagram Live who, uh, who like talking about this. Some, some Twitter handles who like diving into this. I want to hear from you guys. When you think of a PG County, when, when you think of, of a PG County legend, what does that mean? Coach Garner. Um, I, I don't know if there's a, a perfect science to it, you know, like, um, you know, I, I just always say that, you know, when, when a person is able to leave their print on something, man, in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, they're still talking about the impact that you made, then to me, I think that's legendary status, you know, um, I, I just don't know if there's a blueprint for it. You know, for an example, um, I would look at Coach Wilson and say, in my opinion, he's a legendary coach, you know, yeah. and, you know, not just because uh, statistically, you know, obviously, you know, there's some statistical things there and uh, games won, championships won, great players develop, you know, um, but we're still talking about Coach Wilson, you know what I'm saying? And he's coached in many different decades. So to me, you know, 10 years from now, you can have a conversation. And if you're talking about certain things, Coach Wilson's name will come up. 20 years from now, you would have a conversation about certain things and his name will come up. I mean, you know, so to me, that's, that's legendary, you know. And I know that they've been having some conversations about it you know, in terms of um, they've, they've been really getting more personal with it, you know, um, PG County legend, and, you know, things of that nature, you know. And um, I just think, man, you know, I, I really don't know what makes a legend, man. I mean, you know, I just know that there are legends in everybody's community. I mean, each one of us can probably talk about somebody that's been a legend in their, in their own community. Renard Johnson, you cannot go in the Potomac Nation and not talk about Renard Johnson. He's a legend in the Potomac community. You know what I'm saying? Anywhere, 23rd Parkway, Iverson Mall, Wheeler Road. 
I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, but you can also go in Bladensburg community. You can go in Fermont Heights community. I mean, there's so many. You can go, I mean, you know, where Massenburg's been, uh, Coach O'Connell, I mean, Newman, Oxon Hill, Howard, Central. I mean, I just think there's countless amount of players that have done some things that has made them legends in their own community. You know what I mean? And then when you get, and then it's another level. You know what I'm saying? You can be a legend at Potomac, but that don't mean you're a legend all over. That don't mean you're a legend in the DMV. It don't mean you're a legend in the, you know, just, you know what I mean? So I, I just think there's certain levels to it, and I'm not sure what the criteria would be. Coach Howard, tell me, tell me what legends you feel like you've coached. Well, as, uh, as I alluded to when I was at Largo, uh, Terrence Carter in 2004, the miraculous game that he had at High Point, and he was uh, he scored 50, 53 points uh, at High Point. It was his, it was our last regular season game, and Sam oh. Young, who was at Friendly under Coach Gerald Moore, uh, God rest the dead, uh, at the time, Sam had 52 points that game, and uh, that was a tremendous team, and it led Terrence to become the scoring champ for that season, having 54 points or 53, whatever that number was. And it came down to that last game in the county, and everybody in the county knew it. And that was in 2004. Obviously, it was only my fourth year at, at Largo, but we had a tremendous run. And that's one of the most memorable moments that I have uh, between Terrence Carter and, and Sam Young. And then Sam goes on and has a tremendous career at Pitt and plays in the NBA. And Terrence goes on and goes to Division One. James Madison plays well, does that. And now he's on my staff now. So I can reach back and I can talk back to other players um, about him um, from Oxon Hill, Largo, and throughout the county. I mean, others remember that. And, you know, Jeff Green, another young man, at, at, at when they won the championship at, at Northwestern. Uh, so it, it's, it's been several moments that we've had that, that we've had. Kwame Morgan, these are like one-year guys that I had at Largo. I, Kwame played with me for three years, but his senior year, he averaged 29 points a game. Uh, he did extremely well. Uh, and, and, you know, we were 25-1 and one that year. You know, notably, it said we, the, the, the county championship game uh, at Wise was just – it was phenomenal when we played against uh, uh, Flowers that year. Uh, and, you know, we went on – we were 25-0 and 0 going into – uh, Cole Fieldhouse, Comcast, whatever it was at the time, and, and we lost at the state semifinals, but we had a tremendous run through Prince George's County. And every school that's, that's represented here has gone through that cycle of having a player or two in their individual zones at their schools where they had some legendary moments, and those moments rang true for that community. And sometimes it gets a little bit deeper uh, out to D.C., out to Virginia, everywhere else, where those players become legendary and they want to play against Prince George's County schools. Anywhere you go uh, across the country, the mid-Atlantic, you know, it talks about Prince George's County. I want to play that team from PG because they got good bump up there or they got this, they got that. It's always that we're the standard bearer for the mid-Atlantic region. Uh, in DMV, absolutely. But everybody wants to get tested by us uh, and play against us. And a lot of times they come up on the opposite end of, uh, of L's playing against us. Any, anyone else on, on legend? What, what, what makes a legend? Don't Do you, you have any stories about guys who became legends in your gym or against your team? Don't, don't you think, Mark? Um, I know, like, look, I'm, I'm not the dude that's staying up till 3 in the morning watching uh, Queen Cook uh, – you know, talk to a million people online. So these, these guys might be better to talk about it than me. But, I mean, I'm a public school coach, and I know a lot of the debate's been, like, can they be a PG legend if, if they didn't go to a PG public school? Like, I mean, don't y'all think part of our story is the fact that these private schools take a bunch of kids, and yet we still got really competitive teams, and we're still sending kids to college every year. So, I mean, you know, to me, I, th I think that's part of the story. Like, as someone who's from PG County, like, wh what, 
Kevin Durant, Victor Oladipo, they, they don't count as PG legends because they didn't play public school. Right. And I mean, I'm, I'm a public school coach, but I, I think that's part of the story is that, you know, these private, we, we have so many private schools in this area. I don't think there's many areas around the country where the private schools take all the players, but yet we can still compete at a really high level with them. We still send kids to school, all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, I think you know, the fact, the fact that the math is in PG County, right? Like that, that's part of PG County story. Uh, I don't yeah. know. That's what I think. Can I ask a question real quick? Because me and Chuck talked about this the other day. And and I agree with, of course, Sean Connor, what he just said. Those guys from the county, they're all legends. But being from North Carolina and people that live in D.C., public schools that talk about D.C. basketball, I don't hear them include St. John's and Gonzaga in their talks of D.C. legends. Can somebody, am I fat? Is that kind of true or? And why is that true? They 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 might include Carroll, but they're not going to include St. John's, Gonzaga. But, but that's different because, but that's different because those schools in D.C. have kids coming from Virginia, um, other states. But P.G. County public schools, most of their kids come from most mainly P.G. County. Mm-hmm. So I, I understand that that's a good point you make, though, Coach O. But but in P.G. County, most of those kids come from P.G. County. When, right. when, when a private school grabbing our kids, our kids are homegrown. Through, through public schools and elementary and middle school. And, and, and Brayna said earlier, even the Boys and Girls Club. Because back in the days, Civil Hill Boys and Girls Club was pumping out a lot. <laughs> Upper Marlboro Boys and Girls was pumping out a lot. Yeah, a lot of those kids was Boys and Girls Club. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think PG County legend, you have to have the roots. Um, I don't think it just goes to the high school. Right. Um, you know, we talk about Quinn Cook. And I know all those guys, like Nolan. I told Nolan he's not a PG County legend. I mean, you my guy, my guy but you're not born and raised. Um, Mike Beasley is C. Pleasant Ray. You know, uh, Quinn Cook, PG County. Um, you know, from day one. So, you know, you're a high school legend, definitely. But when we get to uh, Stanford as a PG County legend, we got guys, even though I can talk about Coach Lou, high school PG, you know. You gotta, so you gotta, gl- your story just can't be your high school. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that y'all keep it recent because Sherrod Baltimore is a PG County legend. The dunk that Alexander had against us in 2013 in the county championship makes him a, 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 a legend. When that back door that we had prepared for for a week, he got it and dunked it and ended the game. That makes him a legend. I still can't sleep over that. I hate you. I hate No, but it, it's, it's like the, the reason, guys. I think um, Randall Brody's a legend. Timon, the, the kid you had, um, Coach oh, wow. Bird. Oh, yeah. Legend. Lord. Uh, my man Taylor, I had to design a whole scheme to, to stop Davon Taylor. I mean, you know, Lou, Ron Polite is a legend already. That man. dunk he had against us in that second game, legendary. It's going li- to live in infamy for us, but it's going to live in, you know, in the annals of the best th- play in Oxen Hill history, possibly, because that turned the whole game around. He's a legend already. Man. Oh, that, that the year you pulled off. When you got to the state championship, man, I man, I was so proud of you. It, I, man, I man, I wanted and I'm glad you didn't take your nephew from me. <laughs> Even though you tried, you tried. You I couldn't tried, do it. But it's all good. <laughs> Mario, what you do, what you what you do. I mean, these are legends right now. Coach Garner, you already know. But uh, but make sure you know Dirk yeah. Coulter, Lou, was a is a legend. Yes, Dirk Coulter. Coulter. Oh, Dirk, Dirk Coulter is a legend. I do one do. Undo, the man. <laughs> bad man. Dirk Coulter was a bad man. Yeah, he was. He hit five threes at the Tomcats and in the first half. Bad you, man. Have, you have some legendary teams. That we've coached. That we've coached. I was an assistant coach on the only team that's ever finished number one 
in the Washington Post, 1996 Central. Okay. The only PG County team that's ever been number one. To this day. No, no, Potomac finished 90. No, uh, in, yes, in Burr, that's inaccurate, bro. No, no, Dante Cunningham Dante and all those guys. Burr. Right. In 2000. Right. <laughs> Burr. Watch Burr. your mouth. <laughs> Dante Cunningham Burr. and them finished number one from wire they to wire, did. baby, with they Bobby did. Shannon and them. But that was, I was, that was the next team I was getting ready to bring up. <laughs> as far as going, every team, uh, the Roosevelt, the run that they had. I mean, Coach O'Connell's had, had, I think they went to the state four straight years, Coach. I mean, stuff like that is like, I mean, who can say that they went to the states four straight years? Yeah, buddy. You know, um, that's what make that do. I've seen some friend. great, it's been some great high school teams and you know, the public, the private schools do overshadow um, some of the greatness that we have. Um, I'm always advocated, argue private schools down. Uh, I think it was, at a, it was a time where you looked in the NBA and it was more public school players than private school players at one time. So, um, you know, I just want to make sure that when we start talking about PG legends, we can that don't forget, you know, the roots of some of these players that we have. Hey, so I, I'll add one more thing to the legend conversation. Um, the uh, a, a big part of being a legend, though, is philanthropy. You got to give back. You can't just take that legendary status and, and, and move on. Like, you have to come back to your roots. And 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 give back to the young men. It don't have to be money. It don't have to be gear. It can be just some conversation to make sure that you you sow that seed into somebody else. That way they can pay it forward sometime down the line. You have to come back though, man. That's important. That's why I love Chris McCray because that dude always comes back and he speaks to our young men, Kevin Jolly, um, Nasir Austin. All those guys come back stink um you know all those dudes come back and they speak to our guys i think that's a huge part of being a legend it's true it may not be a pg county thing but for that community it's huge that's true that's true that's true, that's true. yeah I, I totally agree with everybody man I, hey look i'm gonna be honest with you um i didn't really start getting involved until 2005 not really paying attention. You know, I would just, like I said, when I moved here, I didn't know anything about, about Prince George's County. Uh, and it's funny because the more I got involved with athletics, I was like overwhelmed with like, wow. All I kept saying was, wow. And I remember in 2000, when I got, it was 2000, 2001, when I first started working at Saratsville. And the head coach at the time was Jimmy Butler. I don't know if everybody know who Jimmy Butler is, but uh, I'm pretty sure um, Massenburg, you probably know because. I got it. Yeah, you said you won it in, y'all won it in 96, right? Yeah, they won it in 97. And Earl, Swazil, Earl, Swazil won it in 97. Right. And when I first started working at Sarasville, I got a chance to to work with uh, Jim Butler. And and in my in my eye, when I saw Jim Butler and I saw what he did, what he had, I mean, I was just truly amazed. The type of talent that he had at Sarasville at that time. But and I would sit there in the gym and I would watch other teams come in from other schools, Forestville, Central, you know, and I'm just sitting here like blown away. And I remember a game where Sarasville played the team from, uh, what's the team that Tracy McGrady went to? I mean, uh, the high school. Mount Zion? Mount Zion. Mount Zion. Yeah, 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 Mount Zion. So we had, so Sarasville had a team that year, and we were big. I mean, we had like, I mean, I wasn't coaching it, I was just watching. So we had guys like Harry Dunn, Matthew Horn. Uh, Earl, I mean, it was just so many different guys on that squad. And Sarasville was like big. I'm talking six, seven, six, eight. And everybody in the county was big at that time, in my opinion. And so I had the chance to watch Mount Zion come through, but McGrady was gone. It was uh, 
it was a kid named Jared Jack um, that played for them at that time. And I was just sitting there watching, and they came and played. It was like 2001. They played Sarasville. They beat us. But I was just so amazed that the number of people that came to that game to watch Jerry Jack. And and I learned later on <laughs> that Jerry Jack was from County. Fort Washington. Am I right? <laughs> DG County. Right. <laughs> and, I, and, it, and it hit me because I was like, wait a minute. How is it that this kid is going to school in North Carolina to Mount Zion playing? But, he, but, but he's from Fort Washington. And it didn't really – it it just it didn't really I couldn't really fathom like wow well, you could have just been playing down the street at Friendly, but at that time Friendly was also loaded too. Um, basketball struck me in two thousand five when I was I, I came a long way for basketball. I was the clock operator at Sarasville. <laughs> it was a show every single night. Every public school that came through that I had the opportunity to watch from from the time that I got there in 2000 to to the time that I really I didn't like I paid attention from 2000 to 2004. But then when I got a chance to sit and watch coaches coach against each other at the table and it took me it blew me away that the amount of strategy and talent that went in each night. I'm like, man, this is flicking amazing. I remember the time when Largo came through. What's the big kid you had uh, that went to Villanova, Lou? Um, Maurice Sutton. Maurice Sutton. Yeah, Maurice Sutton. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I laugh. I laugh because I sit back and I watch to this day when you still you still throw that same backdoor lob. You threw it to him. <laughs> I was in Terrasville. <laughs> And it's just funny to me because I sit there and I watch. You want the play like, call name? Huh? You want the play <laughs> call name? No. no, 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 no. <laughs> but I remember, but I remember that same lob from back in like 06, 07. And I wasn't even coaching then. I'm just sitting there like, wow, there it is. The same <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? And it's just amazing. It's amazing to me, the history. You know, I never really paid attention a whole lot to the 4A because I was, you know, where I was with Sarasville 3, we were the 3 one a so I just always saw, you know, everybody in our league. Right, Coach. Everybody uh, want to get me, Coach. Huh? Er, er, it's a battle, all right? They just want, they just want oh. to get up on my teams, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember, man. I, I just, you know, just to go back, I mean, it's a lot of history, man. It's definitely a lot of history when you talk about legendary. And I, and I saw the thing on Twitter, and I was just kind of like, they, it what, what struck me was, uh, some of the private school guys were getting mad because they weren't considered legends. Right. And I'm like, y'all don't oh, understand. And Prince George don't talk about they would get 40s and 50s. Yeah, and yeah. Like, right. yeah, and I was like, wait a minute, hold that on. Was was legendary. Legendary. The, yeah, the, the best, the best response was when they screenshotted the final for the North Point versus Sidwell Friends North game, Point. and my man had 18 points in that game. Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't say he had a triple-double. He did definitely have a triple-double in that game. But yeah. <laughs> you, it wasn't it wasn't 40, bro. Oh, there was a lot of that going on, Chuck. People people really like talking during this quarantine. That's what I gather. Oh, yeah. Coach Lou, oh, no. yeah. Twitter thumbs get the go. This man, Nolan, Nolan said he would average 40. Did he say that? I yeah. said, Nolan, you had 12 at Super. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, who's ready for a little trivia? Okay. Go so, ahead. I've, I've spent a little time putting together some, some Prince George's County and some Maryland State trivia together. Um, some of the names that, I'm, that the answers to these questions have been mentioned throughout this, uh, throughout this conversation we've had. But I got about 10 questions here, and we'll see, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see who's got the – Who's got the knowledge upstairs? My money's on Coach Berg. But you got to be loud and to the point, Coach Berg. You ready? Ready. All right. So here's the first question. The longest Maryland State Finals, and when I say Maryland State Finals, I mean any game at the University of Maryland. So that's Coldfield House, Xfinity. Oxen Hill versus Oxen Hill, Oxen Hill, uh, Lake Cliff. Huh? Oxenville versus Springbrook. 
Blake Clifton. Hill, Gaithersburg. Hey, what year was that? Gaithersburg. Ooh. That was Nine, Mike Sweeney Jr. year. 1999. No. Nope. Oh, it was 98. 90, 80, 98, 98, yeah. I knew it was 98 or 99. And how I, I was at, Ox, at the time, I was at Oxen Hill. You remember how many overtimes it went? Four. Four. Five. 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 Who, who was at that game? Raise your hand. Anybody? I was at that game. I was definitely there. After that game, Hakima Jackson transferred and went to DeMatha. Yep, he sure did. And Mike Sweeney fouled out on yep. the worst Mike call. Mike Sweeney ever. fouled out in the, in the third overtime, I think. Fourth. Fourth? Fourth. Okay. Mark, you should release that game. So I actually have footage of that game, but I'm waiting on some rights issues to clear before I can uh, – before I can make it public. Oh, man. Mark <laughs> Neal was a heavy favorite in that game. All right, where's my prize? I get a, like, uh, a Capitol Hoop shirt, right? You get one point, Chuck, one point. Oh, all right, all right, okay. You, all right. that, you <laughs> called it. You called it. Get the shirt that later. Day. All right, question number two. The most state appearances of any Prince George's County school. Wim Park. And how Wim many? Wim Park. How many? Ten. Coach Johnson, how many? Gotta be 12. 27. 11 with Earl Hawkins in 11. I think it's more than that. It's like 22. I think it's more than that. 22. Yeah. Oh, 22. Yeah, I think it's way more. Appearances. Oh, appearances. Oh. Appearances. Appearances. He said appearances. All right, all right. Well, Gwyn Park also has the record for state chips. How many state chips? 14. 14? No. That may be 12. 10. Uh, is it nine? 10. It's, not, it's 10. 10. It's 10. Okay. Vermont Heights is second with eight. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Go most... ahead, Chuck. Hey, Berg, I'm on your heels over here, Berg. <laughs> yeah, y'all was in y'all, y'all was <laughs> a high school in 1930, so you should. Hey, I'm, <laughs> you do, if you do anything before 98, I'm done, though. <laughs> All right. Um, the number and the team of the most consecutive state championships ever by a Prince George's County school. Mm. Mm. Gwen, be Gwen Girls or boys? That was gotta be. They're all boys Park. questions. Okay, because I was. <laughs> the number, of, say that is question Gwen, again. Is it Gwen Park? The most consecutive six. championships, like back to back to back years in a row. How six. many of them in what school? It's six for Fairmont Heights. Gwen Park, Park again. You got Fairmont right, but not six. It's five, then. Fairmont with three. three. Fairmont three. It gotta be five, because Brendan went four. Fairmont with four. It's four? Oh, this is winning consecutive. Oh, oh winning. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I, hear so yeah. I definitely uh, know. You gotta Fairmont remember I... back then, Fairmont only, and Douglas, they only ones that had black guys in the school. So you got to remember that. <laughs> we'll put an asterisk next to that question. So these things these are skewed. I'm mark. just saying, these are some tricky questions. This is some skewed data. I know that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you can only go to two schools. You're going to have to take hey, that up with Google. Right. Hey, man. All right. The most points ever scored in a Maryland State Finals game, again, that's finals or semifinals, by a Prince George's County player. Who and how many? Oh, player. Oh, oh. Damn. Rebounds. Yeah, was it was it Jamal Brown's Razville? Jamal Brown, it is Jamal Brown. It is, it is Jamal right. Brown. Yeah, 38. Yeah, 38. Brown. No, it was a dude from no wait a minute, hold on. Bernard, no, how many Brody had? It was not. Someone had 41. Uh Mike Sweeten? No. His no, name has Monty, been brought up. Monty only had 33. His name His has name been brought up in the last 83 minutes. Walt Williams? Nope. 41? By- Byron Tucker? No, we're Byron going Byron way back. Way we back. ain't going to talk about Byron Tucker. Yeah, way back. By- Byron never went to a state, I don't think. Mm. I remember What's Bernie cool? Butler having the number. Oh, Lynn Bass. Yeah. <laughs> no, Jeff Green. Jeff Green? No, nah, definitely Harold not. Fox? Oh, no. Harold, yeah. Harold, Fox. Harold Fox. Harold Fox. Harold Fox. Garner. I forget about Harold Northwestern. Fox. <laughs> yep. The 1968 class double A semifinal. Were you it's there, Coach Berg? Book. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> 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 he was coaching. He was an assistant coach. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 
an old kid from Saratville. Uh, Jamal, Jamal Brown. I thought he broke the tied the record or broke it. One yeah, of the, in the book. I don't think the the, the, the books were. I think they classified the states as two different things because they used the Potomac. Jamal Brown was listed. Right? Jamal Brown had 38 in the state semi. Then I think he had 39 in the final. Yeah, he had the most points in the tournament. In the yeah. two games. Correct. In the two games is Jamal Brown. Gotcha. All right. Um, here's a good one for you. In what year did the Maryland state classifications, when did they start being called 4A, 3A, 2A, and 1A? Go ahead, Bird. 1986. Yeah, I was around for that one. <laughs> was it 89? Yep. 89, right? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Right. There you go. The most, you got to tell me the player, the team, the year, and the number. Wow. Most rebounds ever. Earl Hawk. Earl Hawk, Hawk is 31 Earl rebounds Earl. in 1960 71. <laughs> you ain't going to let us forget that. Man. Earl Hawk is 31 rebounds. That's that's right, but the year is wrong. Who's got uh, the year? 69. 70. 70? 70. 70. Yeah, I said 71. Yeah. Mm. Coach Johnson, you were shaking your head when I started asking for all those things, and you knew all of them right off the break. <laughs> yeah. I love my county, baby. All hey, right. did, John, he, did y'all know he celebrates that every year when somebody doesn't reach it? <laughs> you know, um, uh, Q had 30 in, one, in the state championship game. He was one short. Really? Wow. He 30? had 30. Yep. He had 30 against Oakdale or either uh, Patterson, one of those games. But he had 50 combined Probably Oakdale. in the two games. Wow. Probably Oakdale. All right. The most points ever scored in a quarter in a Maryland State final game. Ooh. What team? 44, Fairmont Heights. Joe awful Phelps. Close, no. Awful close. 43, Fairmont Heights. What year, Chuck? 55. No, that was 74. <laughs> yeah, 1906. <laughs> Same year as my fraternity. Fair, my. It, was, it was 74 or 75. 71. Not a fair my question. Wow, okay. my. All right, now now listen to this next question. <laughs> you know, Fairmont <laughs> had slaves playing for him. Hey, wow. Fairmont and Doug had slaves. Hey, with no shot clock. <laughs> they had sharecroppers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like, all right, we got to get out this field and go play hey, basketball. Man. Stop coming for our legends, man. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Y'all got 40 years ahead, everybody. Hey, that's all right, though. That's all right. Catch all right, all right. I'm, I'm not going to hate. I'm not going to hate. I'm not going to hate. All right, this hate. next question, the answer is one of your teams. So I'm going to ask you now, if it's your team, don't say the answer so we can see if everyone else knows, all right? The last team in Prince George's County – that sent all five starters Division One. That's Potomac. Uh, that's, that's Potomac. Oh, no, Roosevelt. Potomac. 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 Look at that. Potomac. That was that Brody group. <laughs> who can name, who Brody can name the five? Potomac. Oh. Brody. 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 Smith. Damian. Uh, Brook. Day. 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 Brook. Anthony that's, Smith is Brook. Everyone knows oh, okay. Anthony Smith. Brody. Q and Dion, but who was the fifth one? The fifth one, um, Dejan. He played for us. Dejan. Dejan Dixon. Yeah, yeah, that was one league game. And, and he looked at he looked at me cross-eyed like you're joking, right? <laughs> right now. Yes, sir. You always give me credit for that team, Bert. Y'all beat best us that team, year. Best five ever. My man. Uh, the last public school Prince George's County McDonald's All-American player in year. McDonald's. Mike, Mike Tate, Hill, right? Mike, Mike Tate, Tate, 89. Yeah, 89. Yep. Mike, Mike Tate, 89. Hey, I'm, I'm impressing myself over here. All right, last question. The last know. Prince George's County team to win a state championship who entered the playoffs with a record below 500. Friendly. Friendly High School. Friendly. 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 What year was that? 2000? Not no. 2002? No. Roosevelt did it in 02. Yeah. I oh, had Roosevelt cool. written down as the answer, but I could be wrong. Really? Ro yeah. Roosevelt was Roosevelt was 10 and 12 in 02 and then yep. won. Great. 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 Was 10 and 12 and finished 16 and 12. 
Wow. Friendly, friendly wow. went in 98, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody was telling me about that one. Friendly did it in 98, too. But I don't think they was below 500, though. They weren't? Oh, okay. Yeah, they went into the playoffs. They had, they, they had a good record, but I don't think they was below 500. Western, when, okay. Jeff, when they won it, what was their record going in? No, nah, they were good. They were good. Not that good. They barely I made it. They were in the table late. Oh, so were. Rasville was the one who last team who did something like that. What year? But Coach Lee had them. Like 16? No. No, 14. Coach Lee. We talk. Big dude. Oh, yeah. When, when he had, yeah, that was the that was the year he had. Um, Jamal Brown. That was Jamal that Brown, was. Terrell Millington. Oh, yeah, yeah. Guys. I don't know what their record were back then, though. They, 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 had a losing, they had a losing record. Yeah, they were, they they, were under they 500 did. that year, too. Yeah. They were under 500. They won the state. Nah, they went to the nah, championship nah. game and lost. The big boy oh, got kicked no, out. Yeah. I mean, he prayed hard. I could have answered that question. Damn it. <laughs> All right, so let's let's end it on this. How about we'll go around real quick, and everybody in here will ask one PG County trivia question to everybody else. Because mm. I know you guys got all kinds of knowledge upstairs. So we'll start with Coach. We'll start with Coach Berg since he has the most knowledge. And you younger guys, start thinking about your question. Uh, Thank you. PG County question. Okay. Uh, who? Hey, man, you should have gave me a, a couple can of minutes. We, can, can we keep it to our school? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right, I, I got one for you. All right. All right, I'm ready. So, uh, this is a Fairmont Heights question. How many first team, I'm sorry, first through, how many all Met players have come out of Fairmont Heights High School? First team? Not first team, first through four. 15. Who, who has made a team? Oh, wow. No, I honorable didn't. mention. 15. Who said that? Just be guessing on this. No, I think it's about 15. It's 16, actually. Thank God. 16 all Mets out of Fairmont Heights. I, I thought it was 15. But we, lead, we lead the county. I know. That's why oh. I knew. Oh, wow. Can I go next? Yes, sir. Who was the player who got cut as a sophomore from JV, didn't make varsity till the 12th grade at Potomac, and went on to get drafted by the Washington Bullets after his college career at American University. Frank Ross. Frank Ross. Frank Ross. Wow. Was that too easy? I coached him, so that's why I knew. I gave too many clues. You gave a lot of clues, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, a good, that's a good one. Bro. That's a good, great question, though. Right. All right. That's, that's, that's all fact, believe it or not. When that's was why the- Keith Jr. is on, uh, on, on JV sometimes, because of Frank. Seriously. When was the first Prince George's County Championship game? Ooh. That was uh, Oxen Hill and Friendly. And where was that game played? Uh Chicago? Flowers. Flowers. I had to sneak in. <laughs> <laughs> they closed the doors down. Yeah. Who won the game? I had to sneak in too. That's crazy. <laughs> what year was that? that game? Did Friendly win that game? I don't know, but I, I got in through the ball. Friendly run. won. <laughs> Friendly won. That was Gerald Moore. Yep. yep. What year was that? 04, I think. 04. Yeah. When did the game go over to Wise? 05. We played Potomac at Oxen Hill. At Oxen Hill. It went at Oxen Hill first and then at the Wise, 06, 07. Uh, right. That's when we played Flowers. There, that's 06, when it went. Right there. All right, who's got the next question? Uh, how many, how many uh, state championships has the Wise Pumas have won? One. One. Basketball? Basketball. Basketball. One. One. And who was the coach? The legendary <laughs> Rob Gardner. Oh, truly. My guy. Thank you. Rob Gardner. Too easy. Come on. Coach. Hey, hey, I'm telling you, he had the greatest game plan, though. He was smacking <sighs> Springbrook, and then he held the ball. Y'all got to come see us, fellas. And they had to try to chase, and then he ran the score up some more. Great game. Who was the head coach 
at Gwen Park High School before Mike Glick. Steve Matthew. Matthew. Steve yeah, Matthew. Uh, that was our rival, all the, the four brothers and all Who that. Who was the head coach before Fulton at Central? Uh, white guy. Yeah, white guy. Red hair, didn't he, Bird? Didn't he have red hair? Nah, it wasn't red hair. O'Brien. You're talking, you talking about the JV coach. O'Brien? O'Brien, not O'Brien. It was O'Brien's assistant. He was a, he was a coach before Coach Ford. I can't think of his name, but I don't know who it is. I'm just asking y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, what coach on this panel, Mark, your question, what coach on this panel never had a losing season? Ooh. Mm. Look at everybody looking around like, it. yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know what I mean. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Got my butt kicked first year. I would guess Brendan oh. or Chuck. Who is it? Who's never had a losing season on this pack? I've had one. That'd be Brendan. I haven't. I haven't either. O'Connell. And Bird. Bird and O'Connell. No, I've never had a losing season. Oh. You you haven't you've never had a losing season, Bird? Nah. I right, okay. I can't cast that stone. No. <laughs> not at school, I mean, not Coach at Wilson? Stone. Coach Wilson? You had a losing one. season? Oh, I had one my first year at Douglas. My first year out of college. Uh, oh, my okay. first head coaching job at my alma mater. Young buck. Thought I knew it all. <laughs> oh, well, who who on here has had an undefeated I, season? I was going up against the legend, legendary Walter Fulton mm -hmm. and Bob Johnson and Oh my goodness! So many great coaches: uh, Earl Hawkins, Tab uh, Hickman, uh, Tab Hickman, uh, the okay. legendary Gandy down at Gwen. Artie Walker, Ernie Welch, Ernie Coach Wilch. Morgan, Coach Wake. I went against all the monsters: uh, Aaron, Aaron Holder, Coach, Aaron Aaron Holder. Coach McCorkle, Coach Wagner, Coach Coach McCorkle is one of the greatest. Coach Henderson. Coach Bird. Coach, Coach Bird, but I figured him out after that after that first oh, year. Oh, you did? I didn't oh, think you had Coach one. Coach Waters. <laughs> Coach Hay, man. Can't forget all Coach, Coach Hay, can't Bird. forget my guy, man. Coach hey. Bird, you asked you ask me who on this panel has had an undefeated season? Yeah. Man, you got the, you got the stats up there. I, I mean, Garner, Garner lost to Quinn Sorcher the year they were undefeated. I lost to Bethesda Chevy Chase when we were undefeated. Undefeated? Yeah. 25 and 0. I mean, at 20, the end of the 20, season, 20, we, were, 20, we were undefeated. Yeah, undefeated. I don't think anybody had, Mark. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I thought you said, you asked me like there was an answer to it. <laughs> I mean, I'm wondering, you could have picked A, B, C, D, or Just one. I, I, got, I got one. None of the above. All right, let's hear it. Actually, I, actually I got two. I got two. Um, how many state championships have Sarasville won? Two. Five. Five. Really? Four, wow. four, one in 97 and four in the 60s. And then my second question, uh, name the oldest active, it, I mean, he's just a coach. I mean, he, he was a head coach, he, and he's also an assistant coach at this, at this time. Oldest hey, Irv Hay. Irv Hay. Irv Hay. <laughs> Potomac, baby. Irv Hay. Suit left yeah. Forestville, yeah. now Potomac. Coach and Butler. I add to that, too. I heard Coach Butler. Oh, man, good luck. Up. Coach Butler came up earlier, and Coach Butler actually was hired to get rid of me, Bruce, and everybody else that wasn't coaching and teaching in the school at that time. He kept us there. And 17 late years later, I'm still at Blazeburg High School. God rest his soul, Coach Butler. And I was my yeah. head coach. My assistant coach on JV at that time was Irv Hay. Best time of my life. Are you serious? <laughs> hey, are you serious? Hey, yeah, Earl wow. Hay was the uh, baddest. Hey, look, I laughed. <laughs> man, that dude, I don't ever want him to retire. That's my man. <laughs> I got to know Herb at Sarasville. He was he was Butler's assistant coach when I first got there in 2000. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, like I said before, man, I was just amazed at. Oh. I was sitting in the gym and just watching the practice. 
He's the man. man. Yeah. Coach, he coached me my, my junior senior oh, year. Oh, yeah, that's right. And that's he right. used to tell me all the time, don't pass about that, that goddamn ball, boy. You, you keep <laughs> that ball. Don't pass that goddamn ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's him. Hey, Chuck, did he ever tell y'all the one-liner when the kids get mad? Uh-uh. You tell the kids, y'all come here. Show me your teeth. You oh, know? yeah. Hey, <laughs> oh, you, you, talking, you talking about Coach Hay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Mark, I got a question for you. Mm. <laughs> I got a question for you. Um, I'm all ears. I think as, 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 as with us as PG County coaches, we see you, um, someone who we definitely appreciate you. Uh, you always come back to the county, but you also cover the WCAC, oh. you cover everywhere. Um, what do you see from PG County positive and negative when you look at the other uh, jurisdic jurisdictions as far as the coaching? As far as the coaching? Yeah. So for me, a lot of people ask me who I think is a good coach and who I think isn't a good coach off the record a lot. It's really hard for me. Like, I'm not in the huddles. I don't really see the interaction with the kid, with the kids that you guys have. I just see the results, you know? So I don't, I don't know how much of it is your coaching or is their playing and how much crossover there is between them. <clears throat> um, it, it's all, it, you know, I'm behind a camera most of the time I'm there too. So I'm focused out of this little lens trying to catch all the action and I don't get to see the game from the perspective as, as most people. So from a coaching perspective, I, I think it's really hard, hard to answer that. I'll tell you one thing. There are no bad coaches in PG County or very few bad coaches in PG County. And when you go to other jurisdictions, like you can see guys just from a, from a commitment level, how the kids buy into them, how they interact with the referees, like things, things are not as, up, up to up to the level that you guys have them in Prince George's County. I think the atmospheres that you guys have in Prince George's County, at least at all the games that I cover, are unbelievable. I mean, I, I know if I'm coming to a Prince George's County game, it's going to be wild there. Um, <laughs> you know, and there's gonna, it's going to be loud, and the students are going to be into it, and it's just going to be like a raucous environment. Now, part of that is that, obviously, I try to pick the most competitive games with the best teams, I mean, I'm not going to the teams that are 5 and 15's games very often, so obviously some of that comes along with that. But I, I know that I'm in for, for, for great basketball, great crowds, and just the level of competition is, is supreme there. I mean, I don't go to a lot of games in Baltimore City anymore. I used to, but the upper echelon teams in Baltimore City had a very similar feel. I mean, when I would go to the Pattersons and the Dunbars back in the day, or the Digital Harbor, the year that they had an amazing team. I mean, it would be similar with the crowd being into it and everyone, you know, just just being very invested into the game. I agree. I agree. I mean, I'm not going to take all the time, but the group of coaches that you have here, the reason why I think we have so much uh, good product is because of the fact that we coach for uh, we don't we, none of these guys here I don't see are looking towards coaching at the next level you know we're not we're not promoting ourselves and that's what that's the good part about our league I mean we may I mean some you know every now and then you may get a little excited over a win but at the end of each game with these guys, it's, it's, you know, we appreciate the, the 32 minutes that we play, and then we just get back to our team. The respect level is, is, is there. And, you know, looking at other jurisdictions, looking at other counties, whoever's the best team, they seem to kind of degrade everybody else in their conference. You know, we run this, we won, you know, showing the trophies, you know, and, and you got to come right back the next year with those men. 
goes. That's the, I mean, that's the plus of uh, the integrity that, that we have coaching. That's the difference. Um, well, hey, bro, I'm going to add to that because I'm going I'm to speak truth. Um, I think in our league, we have to coach our kids. Our kids don't come ready-made. Most of them don't come ready-made. Right. Um, I, I, I like how the, uh, um, um, Damari was talking about how he first came. I remember when I first came into high school, I didn't think I was ready to coach high school basketball. I, I was a successful middle school basketball coach, and Coach O, I was one of those middle school coaches who always pushed his kids into private school. So when you said that, we put back Laz and Justin. But I didn't think I was ready. I'm, I was watching you guys play and coach. I was scared. I remember my very first conversation with Coach Howard. It was, it was, in, the, it was in the Falcons League at Central High School. And I, I just came on, got high, and I said, I said, hey, you Coach Howard. I'm Coach Pugh. He goes, I know who you are. I'm like, man, just take it easy. I'm gonna learn from you. He's like, nah, I'm gonna beat you by 100. I'm like, wow. I said, I said, wow. This dude just told me he's gonna beat me by 100. I, I, I ain't gonna never, I was nervous, I was scared, but I respected him. And I didn't know the first time we played Largo, I come out, I first, my first five games of the gate was Largo, Douglas, when you had, you had Timon Simmons, Eric Washington, Glover. I had, Carlson had the guard, Carlson had the little guard he had. I was like on four, and I started questioning myself. I said, am I ever going to win a game? Am I, and Howard would beat me by like 30 that first game. I was like, am I ever going to win a game? But one thing I, I took the Coach Burr, what you just said, that made me get back into what coaching was. Study the game more. Make sure I gave my kids what they needed to be successful. And so I think what we do, we coach. We don't get, I know I don't get ready-made kids at Central. It you see, my law, every two or three years, I got to go up and down the roller coaster because I need kids in my program for these two or three years to develop my kids. So I, I take passion in what I give my kids. And I think you said, I, I'm not looking for myself. I'm not looking for go to the next level. I, I like giving back to my community, which is PG County. And I want that I respect all these guys on here, like Coach Burns, at the end of the game. We, you know, we're going to shake up and, 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 you know, shake our hands. Some of us go have drinks. Some of us say it has a lot of good things. So I want to say I respect all of you guys. And I appreciate my tenure as a coach for all the success and things y'all gave to me throughout the, these years real quick. And, and, and I'm, I'll try to be brief. One of the hardest days in my life was June 17th, 2011. And I had to go up to Friendly High School and see Coach Garner and say, man, Potomac wants me to come coach Potomac. And he looked at me, he said, Renard, man, you got to do it. He said, you got to do it. He said, if it were me, I would do it. I said, man, you sure? He said, you're ready. He said, we got the system in place. And we, I cried. And I said, man, thank you for everything. And I had to go see Miss Stevens. As you know, Demario, that's our girl, Miss Stevens. <laughs> now, I had to go see her and tell her I'm going to take the job. But I had to go to him. I didn't want him to hear it from nobody else. I said, Rob, I'm gone. Should I go? He said, man, you got to take it. Now, he was like, well, maybe I'll now leave and go wise because I wanted us to be together. But if you leaving, maybe I may need to do something else. I said, well, you know, let your heart. And, you, and he said, I'm going to pray for you, Renard, because you're going to be all right. You're taking over a team that's 2-22, and 22, but I guarantee you, you can take it over and turn it around. I said, you sure? I said, Rob, we just beat the <laughs> by 50 and 40. He said, Renard, you can turn it around in one year. He said, you know it. Your heart's going to be in the right place. And man, I gave him a hug and I cried and then I went and took the job. But that was a man, like I said, I see him every day. It's not a day that I don't tell him thank you. I promise you. I was his big brother at one point, then he became my mentor at another point. So I appreciate you, Coach. Johnson. Yeah, Coach Johnson. You remember that day? Yes, sir. Yeah. And I got a story for everybody that's that I'm looking at right now. There's not one coach on here that I don't have a story about. And uh, I can go on for days how much I respect everybody uh, that's here, you know. And uh, I, I think it's great coaching that's going on. You know, it's very uh, and and competitive, very competitive. You know, but um, the brotherhood at the end of the day, I always talk. You know, in my program, we always talk about foundation, you know, and in the program, we was talking, you guys mentioned about culture, you know, that's part of our culture that at least I try to build and 
wherever I'm, wherever, wherever I got my two feet at, you talk about foundation and uh, it's a great foundation of guys um, in this coaching tree and in the county, you know, um, and I agree with Coach Pugh, you know, the type of players and kids that we have to coach and we have to mentor and, you know, oftentimes we get the third and fourth or sometimes fifth, sixth best kid and we got to actually build exactly. them up, you know, uh, to be what it is, to be competitive, you know. Um, but I would take any – these guys that I'm looking at right now uh, and if you put them in the same situation with some of these other coaches, WCAC or whatever, man, they got the same, um, you know, horses. Um, I don't see anybody not being victorious in this group, you know. When I first got my first head coaching job, I mean, guys like Massenburg was already a mentor to me. M Massenburg had already planted seeds in me when I was a youngster, you know. Coach Wilson you know, already had planted seeds in me when I was a youngster, you know, but when I got into the coaching, when I, I got my first head coaching position as a coming from a JV head coach into varsity at Friendly, the first person that ever said something to me was Coach Howard. Coach Howard pulled me to the side. I, I, didn't, I didn't really know who Coach Howard was. I mean, that was my first time meeting him as he was the coach at Largo and he pulled me to the side, didn't have to do it and had a very, very excellent um, conversation with me that lasted to this day, you know, and uh, which was just, you know, that's what you do, right? And uh, even we're competing against one another, we're trying to win basketball games, but at the end of the day, man, you know, we here for one another. And um, I, I, pre I appreciate all you guys. Brendan O'Connell always brought the fire out of me. I mean, I went to the 4A, and he was the guy for me that I wanted to beat the most all the time, you know, all the time, you know. And that, I mean, you know, that goes to the great amount of success that he had you know, and watch him from afar and you see how his program is run and you just, you just respect, you know, you, I never been to any of his practices. I've never been, you know, any, any of his huddles, but you know, from afar, you can tell, you know, exactly what kind of program he has and how those kids respond to him and the tradition that they had, you know, it's a lot, you know, those guys, a lot of you guys just bring out the competitive fire you know, in all of us, you know, and so I really appreciate you guys, man. Well, I think Mark is in great, great form that you have put together. Uh, and you got 10 guys on here. I think we have 21 or is it 22 high schools in Prince George's County? It's up to about 24 now. 24. Hey, 26. Oh, it's like 20, it's 20, it's 26 when you count everybody. When yeah. you count all 26. Uh, 26. 26. So you, you've got, you know, uh, uh, almost half of the, the coaches in Prince George's County here, and everybody says what we say as we compete. Obviously, we all like to win, uh, but the development of young men uh, not coming ready-made uh, and having to develop them through four years, two years, three years, however long these young men are in our programs, to have a positive product on the floor, and then the mutual respect that we have, uh, if we could say a story, I'm followed behind, uh, I came behind Lou Wilson, who was the only person other than myself who won a state championship at Largo High School. Uh, and not being from Prince George's County, coming in and, and seeing him, and all I heard was Lou Wilson, Lou Wilson, Lou Wilson, and I'm Lou Howard. So I was always trying to, you know, entrench myself, but I couldn't do that until I understood who Lou Wilson was. And he and I shared some words this season, uh, 20 years later, uh, and I found myself doing the same exact thing that he did to me probably 15 years ago, talking to me in a positive way. And then this thing, everybody here, as, as, as other coaches have said, we have seen this thing go circular. Uh, now we're mentors. Now we're teaching young men how to be men. And those kids that come back from these former teams that we had, they, they respect us. They're productive young men in the community. 
Uh, some have gone to college, some have gone to play pro, uh, but we've done a tremendous job as, as coaches, young, young men, and, uh, you know, just proud to be a part of this group. And I, I wonder, Mark, if that's, if that's sort of an answer to, to Coach Berg's question from earlier, like, do you, do you see this sort of connection, like, in other counties? You know, like, I know, yeah. I know my, my first game ever coaching, uh, Coach Berg, he, he remembers, I, I was 24 years old, JV coach, and the head coach got suspended. So I coached the JV game. He got suspended like a couple minutes before the game. Coach a JV game and a varsity game. And, and you know, I'm brand new. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I remember Coach Berg pulled me aside before and after the game. And I couldn't tell you a damn thing he said because my head was spinning like 100 miles an hour. But, you know, he, he was there for me when, when he didn't even really – know who I was at that sort of point. And I just think you know, everyone here sort of got a story like that from someone. Yeah. Well, th that was how I wanted to wrap this up. Those are going to be my closing remarks was I think it's incredible, like the fraternity that you guys have. And a lot of coaches, a lot of leagues have fraternities with it, you know, amongst their coaches, just because that's kind of how it is. They don't really have a choice, but I really see it being so strong with you guys. So many of you guys have played for each other, have coached under each other, and just the respect level is so high. Um, and I think it's – you know, I've learned so much today in this last hour and whatever we've been on here. I didn't realize how many of you guys had once played for some of you guys. I mean, I knew some of it, but I think it's, uh, it's, 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 it's interesting to say the least, and it's really, it's really compelling as well. Well, thank anyone, you for the opportunity. Anyone else, anyone else have anything before we sign off here? Well, Mark, I just want to say thank you for this great opportunity uh, to bring the finest uh, basketball coaches, mentors, and men in Prince George's County uh, to this forum. I think it was great. I think it was great information. Um, as you can see, we all love each other as brothers, but when we get on the court, we're competing as, as warriors. And, uh, we fight for one another. We fight for our kids. We want our kids to go on to be productive citizens. And uh, that's what it's all about. We want, to, want our kids to grow up to be productive, productive citizens and go on to college. And the best advice that uh, Lou Wilson, who was my AAU coach, and again, another legend was Rodney Curtis for Douglas. We yeah. had some wars. But he told me, Renard, they're going to grow. Wait till they come back in September. They're going to grow. And he was right. Absolutely. He was right. Because I'm always worried. I ain't got any height, but they grow, Coach. And I appreciate that. Absolutely. <laughs> and they, they got a couple extra months to grow this offseason. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. For sure. We're going to have a basketball season next year. Golly. See, there you go. Speaking <laughs> truth. Speaking yeah. truth. We appreciate it, man. As you can see, the, the future is in good hands. You see guys like Rob and Chuck and O. It's a lot of young coaches who at some point in time are going to be a part of a group like this that who have uh, at least won a region. Um, those guys are, 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 you know, great coaches. A lot of former players. And that's what, like Chuck said, that's that's part of what, what starts from being a legend. And when you see kids coming back, like all, most of these guys are from the county and then come back and coach at their school or even a school in the county and adopt that school like they went there. You know, I went to Central and that's my school. But, you know, I had to compete against them. You know, a lot of these guys coaching other schools that they, you know, oh, went to Blade. And that's, that's, and Bernard, I mean, I can only imagine, you know, the pride there, but where is, I think our coaching is in a good place. Uh, we miss out on players. We're going to keep missing out on players, but it, it's all right. I leave. It's still going to be what it is. All right, gentlemen. Berg, make sure you sign me up in your event next year. If you have me, I'm back. Oh, Rob, Rob, Rob Nickens. I already you know. Need I <laughs> you need to get back. <laughs> we good. I, I got him.
If, if you want another 40 people. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. This has been a lot of fun. I appreciate it. <laughs> Give them the, if he wants to keep. You got to go for I the knockout. I got it. It's cool. It's on, right? right? We set? Yeah. Thanks, you can get it. Hey. in front of everybody. We good? It's done. Everybody right. be safe. It's serious time. Be safe, guys. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe. Be good. Thanks for right. again, man. Appreciate you, brother. Peace, everybody. Guys. All right.